Hi everyone, welcome to Red Cliff Plantation State Historic Site in Beach Island, South Carolina. Today we're going to learn about our historic stables. That's me, Ranger Ashley, up on the platform, and we're first going to go into this door that's behind me. That's the door we just came in. Welcome to the loft. This isn't a space you can normally see here at Redcliffe if you just come for a park visit, so I thought I would take this opportunity to show you what the inside of this space looks like. Walking along here, we see some spaces to store hay in, and then at the end here, we see actually a chute, and this chute will allow a person to throw hay down to the horses who would have been housed below. This is the opposite end of that chute, and here's where the hay comes out. The stables that you see here today are not the original stables that were built at Redcliffe in the 1850s. What you see here today was built in the early 1900s. Unfortunately, the original stables at Redcliffe burned down around 1887. Though we don't have any photos of the original stables here at Redcliffe, we do know that when they were rebuilt in the early 1900s, there was another wing to the stables that exist here today. This is some of the remaining foundation from that other wing that's no longer here. Though these aren't the original stables, we do also use this space to take the opportunity to interpret the history of James Henry Hammond's involvement with thoroughbred horse racing in South Carolina. We know that James Henry Hammond purchased thoroughbred horses in the 1830s, and he also purchased highly skilled enslaved people to handle, groom, and train his horses. In fact, some of these enslaved people were so skilled and so in demand that he shared ownership of them with Pierce Mason Butler. This is a receipt for half ownership of a man named George, who at the time he was purchased in 1835 is listed as a trainer about 25 years old. This receipt is for a man named Jack. When James Henry Hammond purchased him in 1833, he was quite elderly, but we know that when he was younger, he was a race rider or a jockey who was owned by General Hampton. We hope that you'll come visit us here at Redcliffe to learn more about our site's history and the people who lived here.